I gotta come clean with you guys. I absolutely hate trimming my dog's nails. And I know a lot of you feel the same way, but why is it so tough for us? Probably because our dogs hate it so much. And when I say they hate it so much, I mean, they really, really hate it. Hey buddy, wanna go ahead and get your nails trimmed, huh? Just cut your nails real quick, what do you think? Come on. Hey, where are you going? Come here. Come on, buddy. It'll be real fast. Come on, buddy. Come on, let's cut those nails. Give me a little trim. Ah, there you are. Hey, hey, come on back here. Come back here, buddy. Okay, so don't do what I did, even if it's for an intro of a YouTube video. Don't chase your dog around with some clippers in your hand. That just gives them the wrong idea. But uh, Arlo is such a sport with these videos, I'll tell you what. So it's really important to keep your dog's nails trimmed because when they get too long and kind of grow past the pad of the dog, it's really uncomfortable for them to walk around on those uh, feet. And the nails can cause posture issues and them to stand kind of funny to try to relieve the pressure uh, and cause a lot of issues there but also it can get pushed into the skin of the dog and cause infections also it just it'll scratch hardwood floors it could make it so it's easier to scratch you scratch your kids it's just better to stay on top of it and keep the nails trimmed plus if you don't stay on top of it and the nails start growing really long that quick which is uh, the nerve and blood supply inside the nail will start to grow with the nail and then when you finally decide hey i need to trim those nails back they're way too long you're not going to be able to trim them very far back in fact um, the nails might still be too long after the trimming and what you're going to have to do then is trim the dog's nails every couple days two to three days uh, consistently until the quick kind of naturally recedes with time and then you can naturally recede the nail back too so it's just easier to stay on top of it from the beginning so how do you know the nails are too long? Well, basically, if the nails grow past the pad of the dog's paw, they're getting too long. Or if they start to touch the ground when they walk, that's definitely a sign it's too long. Uh, if your dog uh, has a little hook at the end of their nail, it's like where the nail kind of steps down. It's a thinner part of the nail. It's usually hollow on the inside, and it makes a sharp angle change. Uh, if you get that hook on the end of the nail, that needs to be trimmed off and it's telling you the nails are getting too long. And also if you start getting that, that tick, tick, tick sound when they walk around on tile or hardwood or linoleum, that is a great sign that the uh, dog's nail is getting too long as well. In fact, Arlo just reached that stage, which is what kind of prompted me to make this video because I do need to trim his nails. Um, so here's an example of the ticking sound uh, when Arlo walks on the tile. Okay, so it's definitely time for Arlo to get his nails trimmed. Uh, let's jump into that and I'll show you how I do it. So first thing you need is some basic trimmers for your dog's nails. Depending how often you trim your dog's nails, you may or may not need this. If you get that hook at the end of their nails, you're going to need this to trim off the hook. Um, but if you're not getting that, you probably can get away with uh, just the Dremel, which I'm going to show you in a second. But uh, I would start off with this, just at least have it on hand uh, in case you do need it. All right, so next you're gonna want some styptic powder on hand. I think I said that right, I think it's called styptic powder. Um, it's to clot the dog's nails if they start to bleed. If you go too far uh, with a Dremel or with trimming them and your dog's nails start to bleed, they don't clot very easy. They bleed for a long time. Not much blood, but they keep bleeding unless you have some way to clot it. Um, I like to use this gel right here. Um, they come in these little tubes. It's a lot better than the powder. Uh, traditionally, this uh, styptic stuff comes uh, in a powder. I like the gel because you just put it on the nail and it uh, soothes the nail, has a little pain uh, relief effect to it, and it also uh, helps the, the blood vessels kind of collapse a little bit and cut off the bleeding. So I, I prefer this. It's a lot less messy than trying to put on just gobs of powder on there. So it's good to keep this on hand just in case of accidents. All right, so next up, you're gonna need a Dremel. And this is one thing that um, took me a while to figure out because I really don't wanna spend the money, but it really was worth it. It's way easier on the dog. It's very difficult to make the accidents where you're gonna have bleeding everywhere. But a Dremel just has a little grinding wheel on the end with a little sandpaper on there. It makes a big difference, just making the whole job way easier. You're gonna need one with adjustable RPMs so you can speed it up or slow it down. Um, this and oh and get a real Dremel please they have those dog nail grinder ones and I've tried those they just break all the time the dog nails dust get in there the dust from the nails and it really wreaks havoc these are made for real shop work they last forever 
Um, and this one has a flashlight on the end of it, which I really like because Doberman's nails are very dark and it's rechargeable and so it's wireless and you don't have that cord where the dog could get tangled up in. So this is the one that I use. I really like it a lot. It comes with this coarse sanding discs that you'll need as well. And uh, those sanding discs, I mean, they will last forever with your dog's nails. It takes a long time for the material of your dog's nails to wear them down. So one sanding disc uh, should last just fine. So two things I forgot to mention, you definitely gotta have a bag of treats uh, to help make this a positive experience for your dog. And it doesn't hurt to have some eye protection for you uh, to keep your eyes safe while you're doing this. So first you're gonna to wanna to get your dog used to it. And with Arlo, I just started simple by playing with his paws a lot. When we're sitting on the couch or something watching TV, I'll play with his paws, manipulate his toes, manipulate his nails specifically, and just kind of get him used to that. Um, I was doing that actually from a young age, and that's really good to do to help him uh, just stay calmer when you do start trimming the nails. Then I'll show him the Dremel. Uh, I'll show it to him off for a little bit so he gets used to that. Then I might turn it on, let him get used to the noise. I'll turn on different RPMs and kind of do that slowly over the course of a handful of days, maybe even a week if you wanted to like get him really used to it and have the smallest chance of your dog freaking out. But it's important to kind of acclimate your dog before you do this or your dog is going to be jumping all around. It's going to be very stressful for him. Okay, so as you go, just remember you're trying to avoid the quick of the nail, the nerve and the blood supply that's somewhere inside that nail. You can't really see it on Dobermans because their nails are so dark, you can't look through and see where the quick is. So really you kind of have to go uh, slowly and make sure you're not gonna hit it. So as you grind the nail back, you'll start to see some white chalky stuff. And then as you get through the white kind of chalkiness, you'll see like a little black dot in the middle of that. If you see that black dot, that is the quick of the nail. And again, it's different lengths for different dogs, depending how long it's been since you had your dog's nails trimmed. Um, but once you see that, it's time to stop. You don't want to go any further because it can cause bleeding and pain for your dog. Uh, but that is how far you go. Okay, so first you got to position your dog. It's, uh, position them in a way that's kind of firm, but gentle still, and allows them a little bit of movement, but not enough to where they can freak out and just completely end the whole session. If you allow them to kind of jerk a little bit and then end the whole session, they're going to do that next time trying to uh, stop the session before you even start. So um, keep that in mind. If you have a position you put your dog in for wrapping the ears, that could be a good position because maybe they're already used to it because there's a position that I always put them in with my leg kind of over him that, um, that I do for ear wrapping. But uh, it's a good idea to start with the rear feet first and then move to the front because the rear feet are a little bit less traumatic for a Doberman. And when you get to the front, it's right in front of their face and you got the Dremel in front of their face and there's definitely uh, more of a tendency for the dog to get apprehensive and some anxiety. Okay, so first inspect every nail and check to make sure that they're not damaged and also look for that hook that hooks down at a sharp angle, which I talked about earlier. If you see the hooks on any of the nails, definitely trim that off with the clippers before you move on to the Dremel. So next, make sure you have the coarse sanding wheel inserted in the Dremel and turn it on to kind of a lower RPM. It's good to start lower, especially if you have a young puppy or a dog who's not used to getting their nails done. Like Arlo, for example, he's not terribly great at it yet. He's not too used to it. So I start around setting 10 on this Dremel, which I believe is 1,000 RPM. But if your dog's used to it, you can you know start at 1,500 or 2,000 RPM or whatever they're comfortable with. The, faster the, the higher the RPM, the faster that wheel spins and the quicker it's gonna uh, grind down the nail. So with Arlo, I like to start with the rear feet and um, I set my RPM at a lower uh, RPM and start going side to side and up and down on the nails. And I continue doing this until I kind of get into the white chalky area of the nails. I like to switch from nail to nail a lot so that it doesn't heat up. And as I see that white chalky area, um, I'm going really slow at that point until I see that little black dot in the middle of that chalky area. And that's when I stop because that's the quick right there. If I'm feeling kind of conservative or the dog's really stressing out, I might just stop in the, in the white chalky area. Uh, but rounding the corners up and down side to side as I go. So once you think you're done and you've got a good length on the nail and you've kind of rounded it off side to side, up and down, take one last look under the nail. A lot of times there's like a cup underneath the nails for these dogs where the sides of the nails grow down a little bit further and there's it's kind of concave in there. And um, it's a good idea to kind of take the edges off of that because that can catch dirt and uh, all types of stuff underneath there. And also uh, if you do that, it helps uh, the quick recede a little bit uh, quicker as well. 
And as I'm going with this, I love to take little breaks and give Arlo lots of love and praise, give him some treats, and then go back to some of the other nails. Uh, lots of stops along the way. That way, next time, he kind of looks forward to getting his nails done because he's thinking, hey, I get so many treats and so much attention when this is happening. This isn't so bad. So definitely, I would encourage you to do that. And when you're done cutting your dog's nails or trimming them, um, give him a jackpot. Give him lots of treats, lots of love and attention. Really make this an overall positive experience for your dog, and you'll be doing way better. Now just remember, this is a system that I use with Arlo. If you have something that works better with your dog, uh, definitely stick to that if that works better for your dog. Uh, but you know, a lot of people like to have their vet trim their dog's nails for the very first time and watch what their vet does. That's not a bad idea at all. I'm not a veterinarian, but this is just my process that I want to share. So maybe you can pick up a couple things that'll help you along your way. Arlo's still definitely getting used to this, guys. He's still a little wary of it, so I just go real quick. I usually just do a real light thing on his nails right now, but as he gets more used to it, um, I'm gonna go and do the full trimming uh, a little more in depth. But um, my previous Doberman Cooper was great at it. He'd sit there all day long. So if your dog's a little bit hesitant to it, just take your time. They will get there once they're uh, they're used to the whole process, but it can be tough uh, in the beginning. And down below, guys, I'll link to all the products that I use in this uh, video from the Dremel, which is probably the most important one uh, to get right, to uh, the styptic powder, if that's how you say it, I think that is, um, or the gel that I use, the styptic gel that I use. Um, and all the other stuff that I've mentioned in this video will be down linked to down below. But you can also go to DobermanPlanet.com, click on the recommended products, uh, page which will be in the menu and then you'll see all my recommended products for Dobermans including hygiene products will be there as well um, that are stuff that I found that I use with my dogs that seem to work really well specifically for the Doberman breed. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, little bell icon that comes up next to it. I would really really appreciate it and uh, don't forget to hit a like drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think? Do you have a method that works better for your dog? Let me know. I'd love to hear it. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time.